Hi, welcome to Tiny Garage Fabrication. Today, I'm going to show you how I shorten drive shafts and how you can do it too. I need to shorten this. So the transmission I went with is a little bit longer than the transmission I took out. So I have to cut this shaft. Uh, I can't cut the rear one because this has a fixed spot in the truck as well. So this needs to stay where it's at. So I need to cut this to compensate for the difference. That's why I'm going to shorten this, but I'm going to show you how I do it. I've done it before a couple of times with pretty good results. Uh, minimal, if no balancing required afterwards, at least for my tastes. So first steps first is I need to get in here and get this nut off. That's always the most fun part. Looks like a three quarter. Now I want you to know that I was not lying about that being the most fun part. And by fun, I mean irritating, aggravating, and anger inducing. So there are no wrenches that will just fit in here to back that nut or bolt out without removing the U-joint completely and separating the shaft. So the first step removing the U-joint is getting the C-clips taken out. And then generally a press is the easiest way to do it. There is an air tool that works pretty good. Uh, my vise, even though it's a big vise, isn't strong enough to press them out. I did press that out off camera, but I'll show you a little bit later how that works out. And now that the bolt has been removed, I will use this clamshell style puller to go ahead and pull the intermediate yoke off. And at this point I could pull the bearing off as well, but I really don't have a need to. I'll just pull off the bearing carrier. Now there's more U-joints to remove. You pull the pins out, and then the best thing I use is a couple of sockets and a press to go ahead and push it through one side. And then you can pull a cap off, generally wiggle the joint out, and then pull the other cap out. If there are any registration marks, you'll want to take note of them or add them yourself. That way you know that the joints get put in in the same configuration they came out because if they're out of phase, basically, that can induce a wobble. All right, whenever I see uh, bed rails left out on the curb, I always pick them up, just because angle iron, it's not real thick, but it comes in handy, especially with the price of steel these days. I'm gonna cut a chunk out of this, and I'll show you why here in a sec. So here's the plan for the angle iron. I'm going to lay it on the drive shaft. I'm going to tack weld it in a few places, and then when I set this in the bandsaw, I will be able to align it based on this angle iron in the vise. That way the saw comes down at the exact um, rotation each time so that my cuts should mirror each other even if there's any variation in my bandsaw blade. So it should give me perfect alignment. Also I'll be able to line these points up when I put the drive shaft back together so that again it will stay in perfect alignment. We got the drive shaft and the bandsaw. The flat side of the angle iron is flat up against here, and she's bottomed out. And I'm gonna make my first cut on one of those lines, close to one of those lines. Uh, once I get through the first cut, we're gonna measure exactly how much we need to go back. I'll make a more precise mark for the second cut, and then we'll weld it up.
So I'm about to start welding this, uh, but first off, to ensure that I get good penetration, because this is pretty thick tubing, and also this is like the first spot that the power goes to. So I want to make sure I get full or as close to full penetration as possible. I'm going to go in with my grinder, and I'm going to bevel this almost all the way down to the inside here. So I'm not going to go all the way to the inside, because I want to keep this uh, flat edge for when I put these back together so that it remains true, but I am going to grind the majority of that away. So kind of a better look at how thick that is probably eighth of an inch maybe a tiny bit more so I've got some grinding to do and of course I can't get to the spot where uh, this angle iron is here so this 25% I'm gonna have to go through after I get some good tacks on these sides here I'm going to remove this because it should be good and true then and then I can come in with the cutting disc and I can grind um, into that I can kind of cut the groove in there so I'm going to get suited up to start making uh, some mess, and we'll get this ground out, and then I'll get it trued up on the table, and we'll throw some welds on it. I'm pretty lucky to have this fab table. Uh, it makes it really nice for clamping everything and, and jigging things up. So all that I'm doing here is making sure that the drive shaft is flat on the table, which means I have to have the ends hang off due to the welds or the yokes or whatever. And then I'm putting a piece of angle iron over the angle iron that's welded to it, as you can kind of see in this clip here, just to make sure that everything stays straight and then we'll add a couple of tack welds. After the tack welds, I can remove this thing from being clamped down in this direction. That way I can get around and add some pretty quality welds around the three quarters that I can get to, and then we'll get rid of the angle iron and finish it out. And I know I pulled my torch away before the post flow was done. I haven't welded in a while. I do self-correct here in another weld or two. So hold on there, comments section. to cut this off, grind that, and then go in for some more root pass.
There we go, all done with the final pass. I'm gonna let that thing smoke for a while. I'm gonna grind down all that and then grind down the uh, other stuff. The little things from the angle iron. Then we'll check it, make sure that it's straight, and we'll put the U joints in. Well, the grinding is all complete, and there is little traces of undercut here and there, and that's, uh, you know, because I'm not the greatest welder in the world, but I think I do a good enough job. Certainly good enough to make this straight. It is definitely straight. Let's get it reassembled. Well, that was less than ideal. I had to uh, literally cut this U-joint out. I had to run it through the bandsaw because over the last, you know, 50 years or whatever, some Neanderthal beat the piss out of these ends so bad that they were mushroomed and, and like rolled over and the bearing caps just could not come out this way. So I had to cut the U-joint, pull it out and press them out this way. You can even see just how absolutely destroyed this is right here. Not straight at all. Um, this drive set shaft section is pretty trashed. These ends came out okay. Um, these are the aft ones. So it was this side here, which is the the um, carrier bearing joint. So I don't know why that was so beat up. I'll show you this real quick. A bracket I made for holding the drive shaft center support bearing. It's got the two holes in it right here for that. And then this cross member came with three holes in it. And I went ahead and made three slots. That way this can sit there and just due to alignment I can move it about five eighths of an inch in or out just to make sure that the center support bearing is where it needs to be. Now there was a product uh, that I could have bought with the cross member. It was about 25 bucks. It was essentially the same thing as this, but I didn't know for sure if it was gonna be the right length. And so I figured it'd be a lot easier for me to just take measurements and build my own. This took me 30 minutes tops to program, cut, bend, weld, and paint. So plenty worth my time to go ahead and just do it myself. go. All right, we'll see how it fits when I get the drive shaft in. Oh no. Clearance, exhaust to drive shaft. Not a whole lot of room, but it fits. Well, I got that shortened to the perfect length, and after driving the truck around a little bit, I can say that there's no wiggles and no wobbles, so I think I did a pretty decent job. Now, it's always a good idea to get your drive shaft balance if you have a drive shaft shop available to you or they can do the entire job, but I like to do stuff myself. And since everything clocked back in exactly the way it came out and I didn't remove any weights, I really don't think that this thing's going to be any differently balanced than it was before I started. If you like this content, make sure to smash that like button. Leave me some comments if you've done something like this similar yourself. And don't forget to subscribe to see more cool project cars and small projects like the one in this video. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.